I made two free contact scripts to help fix a couple annoying problems that come up when we're building up virtual orchestra templates. I'll show you how to get and use these scripts yourself, along with a real example of what I like to fix with cinematic studio strings. One script fixes transposition without messing up our articulation key switches, and I'll use that specifically with the double basses, and the other lets us control what the library comes with mapped as a key switch note by using a MIDI CC controller of our choice instead. Let's get into it. Hey friends, my name is Eric. I'm a composer and software engineer, and this channel goes deep into the tech behind film, TV, and game scoring. And these two simple little contact scripts I wrote, I think can help you change how a sample library works out of the box to better match however you prefer to control things. And the first problem I want to fix is the octave range that Cinematic Studio Strings chose to map its double basses to. For comparison, if I play this low C on a piano, which is two octaves below middle C, that same key on the cellos, has the same sounding pitch, which is the lowest open string, great, but the double basses sound an octave lower. Now I know some of you are thinking, of course, that's how it's supposed to work, but bear with me, I think the script will still help you in other places, because every sample library maker has made a design choice about what range of piano keys to map every instrument to. And sometimes you're just gonna disagree and want to move those notes somewhere else. And for me, I like the fundamental pitch of whatever note I'm playing to match the same fundamental pitch we'd hear on the piano. In other words, in the DAW project, everything sounds at written pitch. So I can use this transpose range script to fix the double basses to work the way I want them to. I'll show you how to get and load the script in just a minute, but the fix is almost as simple as taking the note that I want to play down here, which right now sounds nothing, and transposing it up an octave, so 12 semitones, before it comes into this contact player, and now that plays the pitch that I want. But I think every modern DAW has a built-in transpose feature just like that, so if that were all it took, we wouldn't need a script like this one. And the problem we haven't dealt with yet is how to transpose those real notes without messing up the articulation key switches. Now, I always like to move my key switches down to the very bottom of the MIDI range, which I've gone ahead and done already across this library. A couple videos back, I went deep into why I prefer it that way, and I'll throw a link to that down in the description below, but mainly it comes down to consistency and getting out of the way of the real notes. Without that, we couldn't even do this transposition change because the sounding range of the double basses conflicts with where the key switches are by default. So the problem, I've got these nice consistent articulation presets, meaning expression maps in Cubase, articulation sets in Logic, and so on, that control the articulation key switches in the library in the exact same way for every instrument. But when the DAW nicely sends those key switch notes to contact for us, they also get transposed up an octave, meaning they won't work correctly anymore. And that's what these input range controls on the left are for. Basically, I want to exclude those key switch notes from also being transposed up an octave. And I know they're all below this bottom A of the standard 88 key piano. So what I usually do is set the start of the range to transpose to that A, which is MIDI note 21. And now articulation key switching should work properly. So let me show you how to get and use these scripts yourself. Check the video description. The first link there will take you to this GitHub page where I've shared these two little scripts. Now don't worry, you don't need any coding background or special software installed. The only thing you need to know how to do is copy and paste. And for those of you with a coding background, I can't particularly recommend contact scripting unless, begin sarcasm like I do, you have a special fondness for 1950s era programming language syntax and sarcasm. So we'll set up these presets one at a time, starting with transpose range here. And these setup instructions should just take you down to the actual code, which has this clipboard copy button in the top corner. So hit that, then pop back over to contact and hit this KSP button. And in an empty script tag, hit edit to pop open the script editor, click in here and hit control or command V to paste that code in, hit apply. And then you can collapse that again with edit. And then we can go ahead and save this as a preset. So come to preset and save. I will put this in the transform subfolder because that's the type of script that it is. And we can call it transpose range.nkp and hit save. Exact same setup process applies for this CC split to key switch script. So I'll let you do that one on your own. After that setup, whenever we want to use that preset, we can come again to KSP. And now in the preset menu under user transform, we'll see transpose range and the other CC split 
script. I will note though, if you have multiple versions of contact installed like six and seven on the same system, you'll have to go through these steps independently for each one because those don't share presets by default. All right, back to fixing our orchestral templates. For changing the double basses octave transposition, I wanted that to affect all the articulations. So this default of all MIDI channels does that for us in this kind of multi-channel template. Let's flip over now to the first violins where we have the exact same type of octave mapping problem, but this time only for the harmonic articulation. So if I play this high G on a sustain, that has the same sounding fundamental pitch that the piano note does, but the harmonics sound an octave higher. So let's use the same transpose range script setup as before excluding my key switches. And this time we want to move in the other direction. So since the note sounds too high, I want to transpose down an octave. So minus 12 semitones before it comes into contact. The last trick here is that I only want this to apply to harmonics. So I'm going to set this to channel eight, which is where I have this harmonic articulation set up on its own MIDI channel. And with that, we get piano, sustain, and harmonic, all sounding the same fundamental pitch. Beautiful, consistent, logical. Last up, script number two, which will let us use any MIDI CC controller of our choice instead of what a sample library has chosen to map via key switch note. The thing that drove me nuts the first time I tried to set up a cinematic studio strings template was how to best control this concertino switch, which uses an audio effect filter to simulate muted strings with any of the included articulations. We're kind of down to philosophy again on whether you prefer to think of it more like switching to a different articulation or more like a controller that we might change at any point throughout the music. Anyway, my first pass template modeled muting as a dimension of articulation switching. We got every single articulation times two and had to choose between normal sustain, muted sustain, normal legato, muted legato, normal spiccato, muted spiccato, and so on. And the combinatorics there just made articulation management in the DAW a little bit unwieldy. So on my second pass setting this template up, I decided to write another little contact script to fix that annoying bit. The one tricky part here is that cinematic studio series libraries make heavy use of velocity sensitive key switches. So the same key switch note is used to flip it mutes on and back off. It just depends on if we hit the key hard or soft. The script supports up to four value ranges by flipping these checkboxes on and off. In this case though, I know I only need two rows and I've just arbitrarily chosen a free MIDI controller here, CC21, that I'd rather use to control the mutes instead of a key switch. So I'll take CC21 values in the lower half of the possible range from zero to 63. And I want that to flip this concertino switch off. Now I've already mapped that key switch down to the lowest possible B, which is MIDI note 11. So I will put that in as the output key switch. I want it to send and we need to hit it soft in this case to turn it off. So the softest velocity I could use is one. And then to flip it on, same controller. And this time I'll use the upper half of the range, 64 to 127, same key switch note. And this time as hard as we can hit it. If that's all working right, we should hear the darker, mellower timbre of the simulated mutes as soon as I cross the middle point of this controller. And it goes back to normal as soon as I come back down. Now, that's not how a violin works. You need to give the player a moment of rest to slide the mute on and off, but that just shows the script is doing what it's supposed to. Since that mute effect applies to any of the articulations that we want, I'm going to leave this MIDI channel set to all, but the script also supports channel specific mapping if you ever need that. The template win for us here is that articulation management now becomes a lot simpler by cutting the number of articulations we have to switch between back in half. So there you go. Hope you can find some good uses for these two contact scripts. Whatever style of control you prefer, it's pretty rare to find a sample library that exactly matches your hopes and dreams, so I've found these useful again and again. That transposition fix I made specifically for the harmonics articulation, I could only do because I split individual articulations out onto their own separate MIDI channels. And if you like doing the same thing, you might want to check out this video on how to get the best of both worlds, even when you split things up. Thanks everyone for watching. Till next time, happy scoring.